Would you be prepared to take up a gun and kill someone in order to achieve your freedom? Now I know I can. A hero of South Africa's freedom struggle. Affectionately known as the mother of the nation. A firebrand activist who never lost her fighting spirit even to the very end. Winnie Mandela, as we all know, she has been the the mother of the nation. She has been the greatest, she has been the greatest legend of Soweto. Mama Winnie Mandela, at the height of the struggle, she was part and parcel of the Soweto community. She never detached herself from the community. And I would even dare to say that uh, the pain that we have felt with her passing on can be equal to that of Nelson Mandela himself. The determination to be part of the struggle as a woman and not stand on the side because you are married to a particular name. She was not a woman of status. She was a woman of substance. She gave South Africa and the world her all. Her last demonstration was through voter registration. But also as an ordinary South African woman, she was also close to the most vulnerable. Any family that Mama will come to know having problems, Mama will use her role and influence to help that particular family. Any situation where Mama feels things are not being done properly, she will summon you. I don't know how many times have I been summoned yet. Well, I think it's a life worth celebrating. I think that she has lived a life uh, in commitment to the struggle for the freedom of the people of this country. She continued to serve the people of this country till the end. She uh, always sought to ensure the unity of our people as we seek to achieve development in our freedom. Because ultimately she was one of the people that always understood that freedom is not only about uh, democratic participation, it is about emancipating those who are historically oppressed and disadvantaged and that this is about creating prosperity for all and in all our interactions with her that was utmost in her mind how to ensure that we create a country that creates prosperity for all. You know Mama Winnie was the kind of person who you know gave such wisdom when you spoke to her and I, I only met her once in my life um, at this very house two years ago and when we spoke to her about the struggle that we were enmeshed in as students she was so easily able to relate to our experiences and I think the way in which she was seen as a mother to the generation of 1976 in that same way she became a figure because of her support for Fees Must Fall and the, and the struggle for free education, she became also in many ways a symbolic figure uh, for us, a mother figure for us. So for me as a young woman, it's a great loss. Uh, it's a, a loss for the nation. It's a loss for all progressive forces internationally. We bow our heads um, in commemoration, but also in celebration of a, wife, uh, of a life well lived. And for Mama, we need to, to leave us now, just a year after Uncle Kathy, who also really supported um, the struggle of young people in this country. Winnie Madigizela married the global icon Nelson Mandela in 1958 in the Bondo land. He paid Lobola all the bright price in the African tradition. However, they had to abandon plans for reciprocal ceremony at Mandela's home in Transkei. This was because he had to return to Johannesburg where he was one of the accused in the so-called treason trial.
I so think that, that she should be remembered as one of the heroes of the struggle. Forget about the personal things and the mistakes that he made. I don't want to discuss them. And uh, even though we are not uh, uh, very good friends uh, for very, many years, I want to praise her for her contribution and I will go to her funeral, which I think should be a thank you by the vast majority of the people of South Africa. They were married 38 years until their divorce in 1996. Most of their marriage was spent apart with Nelson Mandela's in prison for 27 years. This left Winnie to raise the two daughters alone and keep his political dream alive. The death of uh, Winnie Matikizela Mandela is a great loss in that she has been one of the strongest women in our struggle who suffered immensely under the apartheid regime, who was imprisoned, who was banished, who was treated very badly, separated not only from her husband but from her children as well and her people. She was not only an inspiration but she also touched the lives of many millions of South Africans during the dark days of apartheid when the ANC was banned, when our people were living under the jackboot of apartheid, she remained the sole voice of the democratic movement. Winnie was at Nelson Mandela's side upon his release from the prison in February 1990. He had clung to her belief that he would become South Africa's first black president. We have lost a fearless fighter, a giant, a mother of the nation. A title which was bestowed on her by the people of South Africa. Winnie Mandela, the, the stone that was rejected by the builder. Winnie Mandela, the president we did not have, who was denied to be a president on the basis that she's a female and African, uh, for that matter. We failed to defend her when she was alive. It is our turn now, before we bury her, to go all out and defend her. For us today, you know, with her passing and many of her generation not with us anymore, is that we have to recommit ourselves that we will continue to make sure that the values, that uh, the struggle that they fought for freedom, that we make sure that we make that a reality for more South Africans, especially the poorest of the poor. As a freedom fighter, Winnie Mandela's place in history is sustained by controversy and accusation of violence. But struggle veteran said she should be remembered for her immense contribution. She suffered a lot. Her health has not been good for a number of years. But uh, she had two daughters grandchildren. She was co a continuous uh, person until freedom came to South Africa. And uh, I think she should be remembered for the good that she did. And try and forget the unpleasant things that she has been accused about.
She was born Nomzamo Winfred Matigizel on September 26. In 1936, in Mbongweni village, Kwapizana in the Eastern Cape, Winnie was one of the nine children, six of them daughters. Her father, Columbus Matigizela, and mother, Gertrude, were both teachers and devout Methodists. The Matigizela family was not poor by local standards, yet Winnie showed generosity and leaning towards social work from a very young age. She enrolled at Jan Hofmeyer's School of Social Work in Johannesburg in 1953 and qualified in 1956. She was not only detained for 18 months. Mama has been detained more than 18 months, but there was a period where she went in for those months. And some of us went in and out, leaving her behind a uh, bus. But Mama refused and resisted any temptation to sell out. The most touching thing about her love for children, against those kind of conditions, Mama never submitted or gave in because she had left Zinzi and Zenani behind. Because she understood that her conviction is for the future of Zenani and Zinzi and all other children of South Africa. That's why she was very active in the detainee support programs. Winnie will go on to become a leading voice in the freedom struggle despite suffering harassment and tangles. With security police. She was even banished to the Free State town of Brentford in 1997, another failed attempt by the oppressive regime to quash her voice. She also spoke truth to power under democracy. She spoke if, if ever there was someone who spoke to leaders of our country, including ANC leaders out here, it was Winnie Matikizela Mandela. She spoke if ever there was a leader who did things that she felt were out of guilt, out of character with the ANC, she always spoke her mind. There was nobody who could silence her. She always spoke her mind. Following the genesis of democracy in 1994, Winnie Mandela served in various high levels of post. A member of the ANC's National Executive Committee, she became a parliamentarian and was twice elected as the ANC Women's League President. Madigizela was also a Deputy Minister of Arts and Culture from 1994 to 1996. Mama, yes, uh, called a spade a spade and she did not waver. When she took a decision, she would uh, follow that decision and she led by example. She would, not, uh, she would not take a decision and run away. She would take a decision and be part of implementation of that decision. Her hatred of oppression shines through in the things that she said. To quote Winnie Mandela, I am the product of the masses of my country and I am the product of my, of my enemy. There is nothing the apartheid government has not done to me. There isn't any pain I haven't known. Our struggle was not a flesh and pan. I kept it alive with every means at my disposal. Look at this truth and reconciliation parade. Mandela should never have agreed to it. What good does the truth do? I am not sorry. I will never be sorry. I will do everything. I will do it again if I had to. Everything. Unquote. Winifred Matigizela Mandela died at the age of 81 on Monday, April the 2nd of 2018 in Johannesburg Mill Park Hospital. She passed away peacefully, surrounded by her family. Lala Ngokolo, mother of the nation, we acknowledge your contribution to our democracy and freedom. Your report, Ain and Seven.